Now I'm going to give you a very small example. In our life, if you turn around and look at people whom you know, there are lots and lots of people with high EQs, but they've not done very well in life. Look at all these college professors. They're all highly intelligent people, intellectual people, very high IQ. But on the other hand, we have seen people who may not have a very high level of IQ, very moderate level of uh, uh, IQs, but those guys have done extremely well in life. They employ thousands and thousands of intelligent people, school, they're all school dropouts, but they go to high class institutes recruiting people. Here we are talking about emotional quotient. The emotional quotient is extremely important at high levels, especially people who lead organizations. We are talking about top honchos, we are talking about CEOs, we are talking about people in top leadership positions, top brass. Because the moment people reach to that level, for example, group of 10 people reaches that level, somebody is a director of production, director of finance, director of R&D, director of marketing, director of strategy, we have all these directors nowadays. Each of these guys have reached that position. They're all highly qualified people. They all have high level of IQs. They're all from bright institutions like IITs, IIMs. They all have an excellent academic pedigree. Not just that, they have a record of accomplishment in their career journey, and which is why they have reached this position, guys. Therefore, your past experience, your qualification, your college, uh, the marks, they're not going to matter much because out of these 10 or 12 people, there's only one who can become a managing director. There is only one who is going to lead the company. And there, your qualification or any of these things we discussed about your marks, your CGPS, they all cease to be a differentiator, right? There's only one differentiator and that is emotional intelligence and that is why emotional quotient becomes extremely important for aspiring CEOs. You can be in very high level positions today, but your existing qualification or the college in which you studied Ivy League, that is not going to help you reach the MD's post. It has got nothing to do with your genetic mapping. It has got nothing to do with your genetic lottery. It is something that one has to voluntarily learn. And we are talking about emotional quotients, right? This is something which people learn from experience, make mistakes, learn from mistakes, and then incorporate those learnings in their future activities. So the central theme of emotional intelligence, we're going to talk about impulses because impulses are a medium of emotions. Each one of us as human uh, beings, we are at the mercy of impulses all the time. The guy who is able to control that impulse becomes a very successful person, right? I'm going to state certain things to you. First premise is we are all human beings. God has created each one of us in a certain manner. Each one of us are endowed by God, right, with certain qualities. I can't use these words endowed because God has put these things. Lust, fear, pride, greed, jealousy, envy. These are things God has packaged into each and every one of us as human beings when we came into this earth. Let us look at a small example. After a long time, you meet one of your old friends, right? You are without a job. Assume that. And you find your friend who is in a very big position in a company. The first feeling you will get is a feeling of envy. Nobody can control that, guys. You might have been a topper in school. You might be thinking, I was a topper. I was a first grader. I had 9.9 .9 CGPA. But this guy was a 7 CGPA, but today he's doing very well in life. He drives a fortuner. So the first feeling you get in your mind is greed. And nobody in this world can stop that because everybody is born with that. God has given that into you. No guy can say, I don't have that feeling at all. Now the question is, what does emotional intelligence tell you? What does EQ tell you? Getting that feeling is completely natural. But... What do you do after that? That is what is extremely important and that is what emotional intelligence teaches you. Getting that feeling is natural, but your subsequent action, are you taking it in your stride and going with the flow? For example, let's look at another example. 
so you going on the street somebody bangs in your on your car you're so angry your headlight is broken you're very very angry that feeling is extremely natural get out of the car but then you find that there is a lady on the seat holding a child she lost control at such point this guy says okay leave the headlight i'll claim it from the insurance are you safe is your baby safe do you need any help from me would you want me to accompany you to the hospital that is the reaction after the incidents that is what is emotional intelligence we are talking about getting that anger when the car is banged is natural but what you do after that is what is important and emotional intelligence teaches you how to do that and it plays a very very important aspect on that particular thing and we will be coming up with various videos on various aspects of uh, emotional intelligence we will be taking a structured approach the whole thing will be divided into five different parts the first will be about the discovery of the brain we will be talking in detail about what this brain is we will be going back millions and millions of years back we will be talking about reptilian brains we will be talking about mammalian brains evolution we will be talking about charles darwin don't worry we will not do a biology class but we will be touching on those aspects over a period of time right this is evolution your principles of natural selection i'm sure all of you know that we have so more sapiens and over a period of time neanderthals and today we are fully evolved obviously we can't say fully evolved but we are better evolved compared with the earlier species and we will be going through a complete journey on all these things of course in a simple uh, language reptilian brain how it became a mammalian brain and then the neocortex got formed other areas were formed the left side of the brain right side of the brain then we will talk about cerebrum cerebellum medulla oblonga uh, not a we will be touching upon them don't worry <laughs> not the biology so these things are required for us to understand brain right because eq is completely connected to a uh, brain and your impulses everything comes from there how you control your action your behavior we will be talking about that so that will be the first part human brain in the second part we will be talking about how to handle relationships when you talk about relationships it's not just relationship with one stakeholder with multiple people with your wife with your children your neighbors your relatives your own brothers and sisters and then in the official atmosphere you have a lot of relationship with your superiors with your colleagues with your subordinates with other stakeholders with your welders uh, vendors with your service providers with other stakeholders with the press and we will be talking about this human aspect of relationship in part 2 in part 3 we will be talking about various attitudes we will be talking about key differences what is attitude what is behavior how our behaviors are shaped right when we were young we will be talking about all that and in part 4 we will be talking about various emotional lessons very interesting very important we will be talking about lots and lots of examples in terms of how people react to certain situations and how better would it have been if the uh, reactions could have been different and we will be talking about lots and lots of examples and case studies because many a times these are very abstract in theory and it's not advisable to explain the concept because that becomes stereotyped and boring right because that's what i'm planning not to do so what i will do is i will bring in lots and lots of case studies stories that you can relate to right so the absorption of that concept becomes a lot easier and uh, uh, you know what kind of uh, the emotional learning lessons we have learned as children as adolescents as grown up people as professionals so this is just an introduction video and over a period of time we will be coming up all these uh, videos all these parts and uh, do subscribe to this video and press the notification bell so that whenever we come up with this kind of videos you will start getting those uh, videos and uh, i i guess that if we go through all these videos it is my hope that we will all become little more emotionally stable
because I'm sure each one of you can go through those 420, 415 pages uh, the emotional uh, coach and emotional intelligence book by Daniel Goldman. Everyone can do that. But it takes a lot of time. I have taken the pain and strain of going through that book. I'm going to customize a lot of those examples in an easy, understandable language. My graphic designers are doing a great job, you know, collecting pictures, images, footages and bringing it in the form of a story. And I will also be telling it in the form of a story so that it's both interesting to hear that. At the same time, there are valuable learnings from it and you will all stand to get benefited. Okay guys, I hope you like this video, wait for the next series of videos, press the subscribe button and press the notification button, we will be coming up with subsequent videos, I hope you like this, and okay guys, this is Dr. Sadashivam signing off till we meet again, Jai Hind.